Before your agent can respond to anything, you need to decide what will power it. And that means choosing the right model. But not all models are created equal. Some are fast and lightweight, while others are more advanced and resource intensive. In this video, I'll take you through the key factors to consider, such as speed, accuracy, and cost, all while exploring models in the AI Toolkit model catalog. In generative AI, everything starts with a model, the engine that processes language. A language model like GPT is trained on massive amounts of text to recognize patterns and generate human-like responses. It predicts what's next based on the input that it's given. But a model on its own doesn't have any direction. And that's where agents come in. An agent provides structure, combining the model with instructions and tasks and goals to complete a specific task. Models can be large, like GPT-4.1, or small, like 5.4. They can run in the cloud, like Claude Sonnet 4, or locally on your machine, like Gemma 3. When building an AI agent, Choosing the right model is like picking an engine for your car. It powers everything. Larger models may offer more accuracy and nuance, but they may also be slower and cost more to run. Whereas smaller models may be cheaper and faster, but they may miss some detail. You'll also want to consider token limits as it impacts how much the model can process in a single response. So ask yourself, what matters most for your agent? speed, cost, or depth. The best model is the one that suits your goals. Once you know what kind of model your agent needs, it's time to start browsing your options. The AI Toolkit is equipped with a model catalog, which includes various models available from GitHub Models. I'll take a scroll through so you can check out some of the ones we have in here. So this first section here, this is where we have the GitHub Models. Now these are going to be free for you to try. And you may see some that you're already familiar with. And as I continue to go down, we want to get to the section of Olama models. There are models available in here from Olama for you to try out. And then there's also some Onyx models available as well. And then just below in this final section, we have models that are going to be available from a third party provider, whether that's going to be Anthropic. We also have some available from Google. NVIDIA NIM models, and we also have some from OpenAI. Now the models in this section are going to require an API key. Where things start to get interesting for me is when you select one of these models, it's going to open what is known as the model card. Now every model has a card that tells its story. While the information on the card will vary, there is some common information that you'll typically find, such as the model developer, any supported languages, the model limitations, any ideal use cases, it's really going to depend on the information that's been provided by the provider for that model. Now, in general, the model cards are going to help you understand not just what the model can do, but also where it might struggle. So for this GPT-4.0 model, for example, in the model card, we have the description for the model itself. We have an idea of what it's going to be good for. And then just below in this one, we get an idea of what the updates have been for this model, for this latest version in particular, GPT-4.0. Once you've decided on which model you want to try, what you'll need to do is come back to the model catalog, and then you'll select the Add button. Selecting Add is going to add the model over here on the left underneath the My Model section. And in this case, I just had one added for OpenAI GPT-4.0, and it's a GitHub model. And now this is where the actual fun begins because now you can actually chat directly with the model. And you can do that chatting right here within Visual Studio Code within the model playground. So coming down here to the tools section, we have playground. And this is going to load the model playground itself. Here in the model preferences section is where you can select the model itself. So if you do have more than one model that's been added to my models, you'll select this drop down and you can switch to whatever models that you need. I'm going to stick with the GPT-4.0. Before I get into the other details for the playground, I'm going to just start by submitting a very simple prompt. Coming down here to the chat window, the prompt that I'm going to submit will say, should I use get rebase or merge for integrating feature branches? And then from here, I can submit. So GPT-4.0 has provided me a response and let's see, it's still generating. 
And you may notice here in the bottom left that the character count is continuing to increase. And that's based on what's been generated from the model itself. And it's still going. So what else do we have here? So we have a lot <laughs> that's been generated. This one took a total of 840 tokens, and that equates to a total of 4,027 characters. Now, I won't read through every single thing that it said here, but this provided some really good information. Let's just tailor this just a little bit. Within the playground, you can also define the model's behavior with context instructions. You may know this to be also a system prompt. I have one that I provided here, and it says you're a senior DevOps engineer known for your clear, concise explanations. When answering questions, always compare pros and cons and include recommendations for your common use cases and keep your response brief. I'm going to submit that same prompt again just to see how the responses may differ. Should I use Git Rebase or Merge for integrating feature branches? All right, so we have our output here from the model and I can already see that there were less tokens used. Scrolling up here so we can see what the response will be. Yeah, it's even formatted very differently now. This looks to be more like what I would hope to have received in a response from the model. So defining the context instructions is going to be incredibly helpful here. You'll also notice that we have some additional options to choose in the chat window. On the far left, you can select to use all the features that are available with this particular model. If you want to do any sort of file attachments or image attachments, the paperclip icon and then this photo icon will be used for that. And then if the model supports any web search, you can toggle that to enable that. Over here on the right hand side within model preferences, the last section that I just want to cover is the inference parameters. You can define the max response length for the tokens. So that's another place where I could have defined that a bit instead of just doing it in the context instructions. I also have this temperature section here that I can define and then also this top P. If you want to see how different models handle the same prompt, you can use the compare feature. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I already have GPT-40 selected and I also have Claude 3.7 Sonnet also available as well to me via Anthropic. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one for comparison. And then here in the screen, I just close this up a bit so we can see a bit more here. I'm going to have two chat windows that display side by side. If I want to change the models at this point, I can do that again. And then just below, I can see that these windows are exactly the same. Now what's great here is that all I need to do is enter the prompt once and it'll populate over in the other one, which is really great. You also notice here within Claude 3.7 Sonnet, I do have another option available, which is thinking. So the options that are going to be available in the chat window is going to be model dependent. Now from here, I wanna go ahead and use this same prompt. Should I use Git Rebase or Merge for integrating feature branches? And we'll submit. I'll be able to see the generation at the same exact time for each model. I can see that Claude is going to run quicker. Um, I do have a bit more tokens used as well, but from what I'm seeing over here on the left, GPT-40 is actually still going. So it may actually use more tokens. This is really great if you want to compare things such as latency or comparing in general how the model responds based on a given prompt. So GPT-40 is done now. This one took a total of 857 tokens. The one from Claude 3.7 Sonnet took 313. And I think I like the way that Claude has formatted this better than the way that GPT-40 has done this. And then from here, if I want to move forward with using Claude 3.7 Sonnet, I would select select this model and now I'm back here in the chat and I can continue to test with this particular model. I mentioned earlier that models can also be local. Local models run directly in your machine, which means there's no API calls or reliance on external servers. This gives you more control over privacy, latency, and costs. It's especially useful if you're using open models like Gemma or Phi, or if you're using custom fine-tuned models tailored to your specific task. You can download local models from Olama and you can use them in the AI toolkit, assuming that they're inside your Olama library. I've already downloaded Phi 4, so I'm going to go ahead and chat with that over in VS Code. So back here in the AI toolkit, I need to add Phi 4 before I can use it. 
coming up to where it says my models, clicking this plus icon, I'll get this wizard. And then from here, I just need to select where my model's actually coming from. So I'm adding an Olama model, and then I'm going to select the models from my Olama library. All the models that I have downloaded from Olama will display here. And right now, all I have is going to be 5.4. So I'll select that one and click OK. And now it's been successfully added. And as I can see here on the left, if I scroll down in the model section, I have now an Olama section as well as 5.4. Now, just like before, I can chat with this model in the playground. So I can select it from my list of models available within model preferences. I'm going to switch to 5.4. And then let's just try that same prompt again. All right, we will run that. Now, it will note whether the model will return token count. And for 5.4, this one in particular does not return the token count. You'll also probably notice that we have a bit of latency here in terms of getting the response. That's going to be the tricky thing with using local models. Latency is going to be impacted by your hardware and the model size. So therefore, if you're trying out the same model that I'm using, you may notice either a faster or a slower generation. And we do, however, have a response that's coming through. So that's great. All right, so we do have a response here. And yeah. Things are looking pretty good as well. And likewise, if I do want to use this local model in a comparison with one of the cloud hosted models, I can do so just by selecting compare and then selecting one of the other models to compare it against. The right model sets a foundation for everything your agent does. With the AI Toolkit's model catalog, you've got everything you need to choose wisely. Download it at aka.ms slash AI Toolkit and explore your options.